The one thing I'll say that's a bit weird about this is, and this is not a complaint about the gameplay in this game, but instead of a complaint about how gameplay just exists in general, um, oh that's interesting, those enemies do not respawn. Um, I guess they figured it was a bit unfair just to come back and instantly be fighting enemies. But it's sort of something that I often think about when it comes to games like this. Like, obviously, somebody in a, they were in a room thinking of different food-related enemies they can come up with, right? But this guy works in a fancy restaurant, so like fries in one of those um, McDonald's-type fry cups don't really make sense. You know, it's, it doesn't really fit with the motif. And yet, as a gamer, we would never question that. You know, it's perfectly fine. They want to put like a Gatling gun-like enemy in it. Fries have a little bit of a look that matches that. That's all that really matters. We don't we don't care for our themes to go that far. And in fact, rarely does a game go as far, even as this one does, just to capture uh, a mood with both the enemies, the design, and just put everything all together that way. I do not like this fish area. Oh, I can get through a door. I need that desperately. Um, but it's like, and you think about like um, the Mario games. Uh, once you, the first one really put a lot of effort into kind of getting the theme down, like the Mario Brothers game. I'm not even talking about Donkey Kong, but the original Mario Brothers game when they were first introduced as plumbers, right? The um, okay. that was well done. Um, th th things like turtles and all the stuff that you run into in that game are sort of stuff that you could imagine being in a in, in sewer pipes. That it doesn't really make sense, but it, it makes sense in our our sense of how um, uh, you know, like how we imagine a sewer pipe might might look like. How it, it fits with our with our mythology surrounding. Um, plumbers and their job and this sort of stuff but um but games really moved away from that I mean, when you go to like most platformers uh from the era that this particular game comes out the the enemy design has nothing to do with the theme they just put whatever the heck every game has like a clown riding a a ball every game every game in this era had like I don't know, a boss that was like a blob that just shrinks when you hit it. In the, at least in the Super Nintendo era, maybe more even more so. Um, slightly later than this. I was really hoping that would allow me to get an item. Um, Sorry, I'm fo uh, for anyone who's li listening to this for the commentary, which is probably no one. It's becoming increasingly difficult to focus with this last stage, which I have the suspicion I'm going to fail at. But um, it, basically, there was a period, and more so before the period we're in now, which is like the the, the middle 3D game era. There was a there was a period where um, a lot just retro enemy design was whatever kind of shit that you could think of. Just throw it in the game. One thing bounces, another thing flies back and forth. It doesn't have to make sense, you know. It's just a video game. It's just for kids. But but a game like this and certain other games from from the stronger video game from the game stronger game design companies um, put a little bit more thought into it instead of make the Design follow the design principles follow through through throughout the entire game, um, and I think for people who are designing retro titles today, um, which is such a strange title, like uh, I I think that the the, the the platformer as a, as a style the the non 3D platformer is is not retro anymore. It's sort of it's just another legitimate. Um, style of game that can be developed and really has its own uh, 
place in game design. You know, if you can tell certain stories and certain st stories play better with a certain style of gameplay. Not everything really needs to be like uh, a 3D shooter to be good, right? Um, I hate this cup guy. Just, just hate him. And I think he's gone when you come back. Um, but there's a certain sense, I think, still today in retro game design, that one of the cute, fun things about a retro game design is you can put random crazy shit in there, and you can make your ha-ha random jokes in the actual design of the enemies. You can say, well, this one you're fighting a porcupine. Why? Because retro, 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 oh, retro, um, no, uh, because it's retro, if, if people have this idea that you can just put whatever it kind of shit in there, but really, the best games, even th even though the Mario games in particular, don't make any sense. I mean, the the, the, the enemies don't really fit that much with, uh, with the aesthetic of the rest of the game. They started off in that place. You know, when you look at, like, the original Mario Brothers, not the original Super Mario Brothers, the, um, the enemies really fit with the motif f f for that, that, that's been set out for the rest of the game so and for the whole series really and when you look at like some of the enemies in say Super Mario Brothers the um, Super Mario Brothers 2 you know when they start to come up with a bunch of new enemies they fit with this 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 whole um, quasi Arabian Nights world that they're creating and also you know with some with ninjas and other sort of quote quote unquote a Asian concepts I know ninjas if anyone should know that ninjas are not particular to the rest of Asia and Japan should know that but in general they, they they put a little bit more of like a flair that fit the motif of that game and when they came up with new enemies but again we look at something like um, uh, one of the reasons I really dislike Super Mario 3 or Super Mario Land 3 or Super Mario Land 2 is it um, and there's a lot of really random enemies in that game and that I think are sort of below the quan the qual the quality that you expect from like a, a first party Nintendo title, and I think it's really important that the enemy design should really reflect um, the game design generally and the motifs and, and themes of the game that, that you're ma that you're making or playing. And that, once again, is the main strength for me of this game. I mean, in some ways, the gameplay is a bit repetitive. Uh, the challenge is not too high, but shit. Um, but it's, it's a bit monotonous in some places. I have to start all the way back at the beginning of that area. I hope not. I think I'm getting near the end of this game, guys. I have a chance of actually beating this game. Flop, flop, flop. Um, so I can't look away from his little uh, wilting petunia there. His little um, uh uncooked hot dog um, that's bleached in the sun his mustache if you will I am not gonna make it through this time because I'm playing very poorly uh, but no in general more thought can be put into that in games and I'd like to see a lot more consistency in that because I think it's a huge benefit to a game because not only does it drive uh, making a game a little bit more um, I don't think I can get that. Um, not only does it drive m making the game a little bit more consistent and consistent theme throughout. Oh, I hate that so much. I'm not gonna make it. This guy's killing me. Um, but it also can drive creativity in terms of uh, the design of the challenge itself. Is that unlimited continuous? That would be nice. Then we could just be sit here all night playing this dumb game. Uh, but, it, it, so, uh, you know, uh, you can get really bogged down in the same kinds of enemies, doing the same kinds of things. You know, the, the, sa the same sort of patterns. And even people who are making new retro games now, a lot of times they just kind of add, it's, it's it can be hard to come up with new enemy patterns for the relatively simple design that is required for like a a decent platformer. There you go. Um, but in this game, because the very fact that they're drawing on this theme means that there's certain things you expect. Like, okay, what are some things you might find in a restaurant? And then that drives enemy design. 
r rather than making the enemy design staid or or the or or bland it really provides you with options for enemy design that can actually inspire the design process doing a lot of um I never really did this before, but I'm, I'm able to successfully scroll a number of enemies off, which is really helping. That's another thing that that uh, contemporary design of um, um, of of platformers I think lacks uh, that people forget about. Really, it's like how much we as gamers in the uh, in the Nintendo era really depended on bugs and little glitches in the way that the engine worked to play the games. And these days when we see a, a bug like that, it tends to be more uh, something that's going to affect the gameplay in a, in a more concerning way. Um, it's something that like, like crashing the engine or, or creating memory leaks or something like that. The, the, the scrolling bugs that uh, existed in a lot of Nintendo games are sort of more fun than the bugs that are capable today. And, um, but it's not something we can... I mean, people people realize we've got the memory to do it, so we, we they don't let the, let games today just sort of have ex cheap ex exploits like that. And yet a lot of games probably wouldn't have been beaten if it weren't for some of those cheap exploits. Like, I don't know if you can imagine beating the original Mega Man game or any of the early Mega Man games without that scrolling, which essentially is a bug. I don't know where I've gotten to at this point. I'm I'm both lost in the in this game, and I'm lost in my uh, discussion of game design. But uh, apparently, I'm not just lost in terms of how well I'm getting through this area. Jesus Christ, that's the best I've done so far. I might have a chance to get to the end this time. I hope. Um, but if you're watching this and you're wondering whether I get to the end, I don't get to the end in this life. So we'll see you next week, uh, or next time, next day, next month, when we play a little bit more of Panic Restaurant. Panic! Ah, it's a restaurant! I'm terrified! <laughs>